Jagde outlines conditions on the day opposition that will support an extension of the election's deadline beyond March 21. Christopher Ram warns President Granger to stop the charade and call elections. Ghana's health crisis depends as more babies dying at public hospitals. And in sport, injury rules and Russell out of the 20 series against England. These and more right now in this, our Tuesday, March 5, 2019 edition of News Update. Good evening. I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thanks for joining us. Opposition leader Bharat Jagdu has given President Granger an ultimatum if he wants to extend the time for elections. He outlined five demands that the head of state must agree to in exchange for the opposition's votes. Opposition leader Bharat Jagdu says he is willing to meet the president and even vote with the government to extend their life. But the president must agree to Jagdu's demands. Atop his list of demands is for elections to be held before the current voters list expires on April 30, 2019. This means the opposition is only giving the government a 39-day extension. Jack Dio also wants the president to agree that no new contracts will be awarded by the state, including regional democratic councils and state-owned corporations after March 21. The third demand is for no new agreements, loans, grants, land leases, or any other such agreements or contracts after March 21, 2019 that bind the government. Jagdio also told the president that the government cannot abuse the state resources for partisan activities. Finally, Jagdio wants President Granger to open the state-owned media to be accessed by all the contesting political parties. If the president agrees to the demands of Jagdio, he promised that the parliamentary opposition will lend its support for the two-thirds majority for an extension beyond March 21, 2019. Jagdio claims his proposal will ensure that the constitution remains intact and prevents Guyana from slipping into a constitutional crisis. Reporting for MTV News Update from the Office of the Leader of the Opposition, Godfrey Brooms. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. It happens. Your septic tank is full. All the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line. When your tank is full, the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet. It is recommended that Sivan's Waste Management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment. And before you can say, shh, it's gone. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPAT's Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more. Check out exclusive decor design, ground floor, city mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful marrow, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. The Bank of Guyana is putting into circulation an upgraded $1,000 currency note. This upgraded currency note has two significant changes to the front and back of the note. Change number one, the replacement of the holographic stripe at the front of the currency note with a rapid micro-optic security feature. This 6mm wide blue micro-optic feature 
displays a fluid and highly visible movement behind the national flower, the Victoria Regia Lily. With only a slight tilt of the bank note, the bands in the rapid feature move up and down behind the static numeral 1000 as the flower petals shimmer in blue and white. Change number two. The replacement of the windowed security thread at the back of the currency note with an embedded plastic thread which is visible when held against the light. All other elements of the $1,000 currency note remain the same. Watermark. A watermark of a macaw on the value of the note 1000 can be seen when the note is held against the light. Latent image. When the $1,000 note is held at an angle, a bold image of the note's denomination is visible in the rosette. Intaglio printing. A raised printing can be felt by passing your fingertips over the denomination and the inner border of the note. This feature is more pronounced on newer notes. Consequences for counterfeiting currency. The Bank of Guyana reminds the public that counterfeiting of currency is a serious criminal offense. The possession of counterfeit notes carries a maximum sentence of 14 years in jail, while production of counterfeit notes carries a life sentence. For more information, visit the website www.bankofguyana.org.gy or call 2265562 Monday to Friday, 8 to 16 hours 30. The People's Progressive Party nominated commissioners at the Ghana Elections Commission today again walked out of a meeting held with the Secretariat after the chairman was found to be the one who gave the direction to publish ads in a newspaper. People's Progressive Party nominated commissioners at the Ghana Elections Commission refused to continue meeting with the Secretariat after they learned that it was the chairman who gave the direction for advertisements to be published in newspapers. Appalled by the move, the commissioners said the decision should have been collectively taken by the commission. The commission has already started its work plan via advertisements to recruit personnel for the conduct of house to house registration. This is essential to ensure the current voters list remains valid after its expiration on April 30. The commissioners, says Ranch, Bibi Shadik and Rupson Ben, walked out of the meeting as they preferred discussion about election preparations. The Secretariat has proposed timelines for the elections, with the earliest being June way past the constitutionally imposed March 21 deadline. The June deadline focused on a cycle of claims and objections. The July-August duration will cater for continuous registration and claims and objection, while house-to-house -house registration will last to December. Meanwhile, throwing his support behind his stakeholders, a former Attorney General Anil Nandlal criticized the Ghana Elections Commission for losing its constitutional impartiality. The Guyana Elections Commission has come in for criticism from stakeholders for its inability to run off elections in a constitutionally 90 days. This narrative is supported by former Attorney General Anil Nandlal, who believes that the Commission has lost its constitutional impartiality. He premised his statement on the unilateral appointment of retired Justice James Patterson as chairman of the Elections Commission. President David Granger unilaterally appointed the chairman after rejecting the opposition leader, Parachagli, a tree list containing 18 names. From the time Mr. James Patterson, retired judge, was appointed in the manner in which he was appointed by President Granger, I have been saying that GCOM has lost its efficacy, its constitutional impartiality as a body, and, ha and lost its autonomy and independence. I said that from the beginning, because this man was plucked out of nowhere, out of anonymity by the president, after rejecting 18 outstanding Guyanese submitted to him by the leader of the opposition in accordance with the constitution. He reminded that the constitutional body is charged exclusively with the functional responsibility for the conduct of elections at any given time. This is provided for in Article 1067 of the constitution. Article 1067 states, notwithstanding its defeat, the government shall remain in office and shall hold an election within three months or such long a period as the National Assembly shall by resolution supported by not less than two-thirds of the votes of all elected members of the National Assembly determine and shall resign after the President takes the oath of office following the election. 
whether the president, if it wants to fix a date for elections, the president has to give the, the, the nation, by way of a proclamation, three months' notice. Right? If it's a no-confidence motion vote, it's a three months' notice again. So the Constitution has fixed uniformly a period of three months for GCOM to get ready for elections. And that was three months period was chosen by the framers of the Constitution because they felt that GCOM can ready itself for three months. The former Attorney General contended that the Elections Commission can be ready but is forced to employ delay tactics in favor of the government. A senior attorney at law is pressuring President Granger to set a date for elections as the constitutional deadline has just over a dozen days left. Christopher Ram has charged the head of state to stop the charade and call elections. March 21 is the deadline for the holding of regional and general elections. This timeline became effective after a confidence motion was passed on December 21 immediately causing the disintegration of the government and the resignation of cabinet. President Granger is responsible to set a date for the holding of elections, but has failed with 16 days remaining. It is due to the looming constitutional crisis that attorney at law Christopher Ram continued bashing the president to act constitutionally and set a date for elections before March 21. The March 21 deadline can only be extended by a two-thirds majority of the National Assembly, which means opposition members would have to vote in the government's favor. Ram asserted that the rhetoric of government ministers is sending the wrong signals to the international community. Attorney General Basil Williams is quoted in media articles as saying, the constitution is wrong and it is GCOM's duty and not that of the president to call elections. Prior, GCOM claimed it does not have the finances to conduct regional and general elections. Christopher Ram considers both statements as opportunistic and politically motivated. As such, the attorney charged President Granger to, and I quote, stop the charade and call elections, end of quote. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. A variety of contraband items were earlier today confiscated during a search at the New Amsterdam prison. The search was conducted by ranks of the Ghana Police Force and the Ghana Prison Service. Among the items discovered are 18 cellular phones, 10 phone chargers, a SIM card, 11 air pieces, 2 phone batteries, 3 phone cases, 12 charger heads, a mirror, a quantity of wires, 2 pairs of scissors, a quantity of construction nails, a tweezer, 6 improvised weapons, a quantity of dried cannabis and 60 lighters. More news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Secure your property, secure your life, get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bel Air Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated, we are your source for security. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. 
you can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 Auto Value New Road Freedom Hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise. Fashion Statement today with Classic Styles. It's our 50% off sale on all evening cocktail prom and club dresses. Classic Styles, 117 Regent Street, telephone 223-1594. Welcome back. You're watching MTV's News Update. General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party has urged Guyanese to start reversing the threat of their freedom under the APNU AFC government. As the People's Progressive Party awaits the holding of elections, it has taken its vision across campaign platforms countrywide. The party's General Secretary, Barrett Jagdi, reminded a gathering last Saturday of the tremendous growth under the successful People's Progressive Party governments. He made comparisons between now and then, where persons are now left fearful about speaking out as a result of the threat of their freedom. So the freedoms that we thought that we had won back, they're all under threat again. And unless we stand up now unless we reverse that now then there will be no future oil money oil sector or no oil sector for the people of this country because we have seen it happen in other parts of the world where there is no freedom where economic freedom and political freedom oil money doesn't matter eventually over a period you get back to being poorer than you are he believes that the populace is laced with a vision truncated by bad policies implemented by the coalition government. Jagda recapped all the projects established and its benefit to the people post-2015 and the reason why it should be victorious at the elections. The party is expected to continue outreaches to other parts of the country leading up to the general and regional elections. We tell you now that a 33-year-old man was apprehended by public spirited citizens shortly after he robbed a young teacher outside of a school at Sophia Greater Georgetown, iNews Guyana is reporting. The website said that as she was leaving the school's premises, the teacher, 20 of Leafield Sophia, was relieved of her necklace and motorcycle by two men around 14.30 hours yesterday. However, one of the perpetrators was promptly apprehended by citizens and handed over to the police, the Ghana police force noted in a press release. Police said the suspect, 33, of Front Road West Ramvald, Georgetown, is cooperating with investigations. He is also being questioned in relation to several similar offences. The other suspect, who goes by the alias Red Man, is currently being sought. The force also issued a public commendation to the citizens who responded to the victims' calls for assistance and for their brave and courageous actions and for supporting law enforcement. The parents of a newborn baby girl are claiming negligence on the part of medical staff at the New Amsterdam Hospital as one of the child's leg the second day after his birth was placed in a cast. 
The child was delivered in February 21, about 21.45 hours, at the New Amsterdam Hospital. According to sources, the child's father, 22-year-old Rafik Drugan of Cane Field East Kanji Burbis, related while at the hospital, his wife being in intense pain was ignored at length by doctors and nurses in hours leading up to her delivery. The man had also noted when his child was born, doctors rushed her to the intensive care unit, with the reason being the baby had jaundice, while the child's mother remained in the hospital's maternity ward. However, the following day, when the family was able to see the baby, they were left in shock to see that a large cast was placed on the child's entire left leg. The man claimed when questioned as to why there was a cast on the baby's leg, the family was told various reasons from several doctors. One of those reasons being the child had sustained a broken leg during a difficult delivery. The other provided by another doctor claimed that the child was born with a deformed leg. The family remains a suspicious something is not what it seems and is at a loss as to why they were not informed of whatever condition their child faced prior to a cast being placed on her leg. Following the infant's official release from the New Amsterdam Hospital last Tuesday, the family indicated that they will continue to search for answers. Efforts to contact the Ministry of Public Health on the matter went unsuccessful. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashawna Gomes, Cornelius. Meanwhile, the parents of a newborn who died after delivery at the New Amsterdam Public Hospital on Friday last is claiming the Regional Health Services of the Ministry of Public Health has been giving them the royal runaround for acquiring a post-mortem on their child's remains. The father of the newborn, who died mere moments after delivery at the New Amsterdam Public Hospital, is frustrated with the way the Regional Health Services is handling the situation to have a post-mortem conducted. According to sources, the dead infant's father, 21-year-old Nantram Gopal, was initially told that the post-mortem would be concluded by Monday, but once there, he was told to return the following day. Having returned, the man was once again informed that he will be contacted at a later date as to when to return and uplift the body after an outstanding post-mortem is performed. The couple of Shieldstone, West Bank Barbies, still grieving the death of the full nine months newborn, is resolute in seeking justice. They are of the belief that the hospital acted in strife when handling their child's delivery. On Friday, March 1, 18-year-old Sharisa Ibrahim of Lot 150 Shieldstown, West Bank, Barbies, was rushed to the New Amsterdam Public Hospital about seven hours after complaining of severe pain. Having been rushed to the hospital by her reputed husband, Gopal, the woman related to doctors and nurses she was ready to deliver. But both the woman and husband were informed by the medical team on hand that she was not ready. Eventually, the woman gave birth about nine hours and was told by nurses that her baby had defecated inside the womb. And it was at that time that the nurses attempted to pump out excess fluid from the child's mouth and nostrils. Previously, when contacted, the director of the regional health services, East Burby's Quarantine, said that he was awaiting a report from the New Amsterdam Hospital, after which an investigation will be launched. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. A pregnant woman is among several persons injured after a route the 44 minibus plunged into a canal along the Sinjin Road earlier today. Online news site Newsroom reported that four passengers, a pregnant woman and a child, are listed as those injured. The Route 44 minibus, the bearing license plate number BLL 1949, while proceeding on the southern carriageway on Valsingen Road, collided with motor car PWW 5365 as it attempted to overtake the car, the report stated. However, according to the driver of the car, Barrick Brady, the minibus hit the right side of his car and the driver attempted to stop at the side of the road but could not do so because he was speeding. As a result, the man claimed that the minibus slammed into the side of his car, which caused the bus to wobble before landing in the middle of a nearby trench. Newsroom reported the man saying he then managed to get out of his car and jumped overboard to assist the passengers who were in the bus. The injured were later escorted to a city hospital for medical treatment. According to reports, the pregnant woman is a member of the Ghana Defence Force. The driver of the minibus was too shaken to speak to the media. He was subsequently escorted by the EMT team to the hospital. We now join Celine Griffith with today's court roundup.
The taxi driver was city police before the court to answer to a charge of attempted murder. Derek Solomon, 60 of Lot 210 Block F, North Sophia, pleaded not guilty to the charge which alleged that on March 2 at North Sophia, Georgetown, with intent to commit murder, he wounded Carl Duncan. Reports indicate that the defendant and virtual complainant had a misunderstanding at home after which the defendant left. He then allegedly returned, armed himself with a knife and inflicted stab wounds about the woman's body before making good his escape. Duncan was rushed to the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation where she was admitted as a patient. An investigation was launched and Solomon was later arrested. Police prosecutor Gordon Mansfield told the court that the victim is still hospitalized and in a serious state at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation due to the stab wounds sustained. Bail was refused and Solomon was remanded to prison until March 26. Meanwhile, a minor and father of four was today fined after he appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan on a wounding charge. 31-year-old John Williams of Matthews Ridge pleaded guilty to the charge which read that on February 22 at the aforementioned location, he assaulted Joan Glasgow so as to cause actual bodily harm. According to reports, the defendant and virtual complainant share a common law union and on the day in question they had a misunderstanding where the defendant allegedly armed himself with a cutlass and dealt several lashes to the woman's head, shoulder and leg, after which he made good his escape. On March, the defendant allegedly returned home and once again assaulted to the woman before making good his escape. A report was made and an investigation was carried out which led to the arrest of the defendant. Williams told the court that Glasgow often goes out to party and leaves their three young children to be looked after by his 10-year-old daughter. As such, a magistrate ordered a probation officer look into the allegations made by the defendant. Williams was fined $15,000 for the offence. Failure to pay the fine will see him spending three weeks in prison. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. <music>
GBTI is your Guyanese bank, a bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families because we see Guyana through your eyes. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Beeson Windows and Doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 6570166. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable, integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. West Indies all-rounder Andrew Russell has been withdrawn from the current T20 squad facing England due to an adverse reaction he had to a medical procedure done in Dubai before he flew to the Carbon for the last two ODI matches. Russell was added to the squad for the last two one-day internationals to replace Kimar Roach but was not selected for the matches and has now been released for the final leg of the tour. CWI selectors opted to retain the rest of the one-day squad, including Jason Holder as captain ahead of the regular T20 skipper Carlos Brathwaite. Chairman of selectors Courtney Brown said the aim is to give as much exposure as possible to hopefuls for the ICC Cricket World Cup 2019 in England and Wales in a bid to continue planning towards the marquee event. 
after discussions with interim head coach Richard Pybus surrounding the preparation for the ICC CWC 2019, it was proposed that they retain the ODI squad to play the T20 matches against England. The West Indies have a triangular series in Ireland in early May, which coincides with the Indian Premier League. A high number of the World Cup hopefuls will be involved in the IPL and will miss the tour in Ireland. CWI therefore felt that they could not miss the opportunity for the coaching staff to continue their work towards finalizing their strategies. The Sandals T20 International Series kicked off earlier today with a day-night contest at the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground and is currently ongoing as the first ball was bowled at 16 hours. The full T20I squad includes Jason Holder, Fabian Allen, Devinder Bishu, Carlos Brathwaite, Darren Bravo, John Campbell, Sheldon Cottrell, Chris Gale, Sherman Hetmeyer, Shai Hope, Ashley Nurse, Nicholas Puran and O'Shane Thomas. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV Sports Update. Virat Kohli hit his 40th one international century before Australia collapsed the land India in a tense eight run win in the second ODI in Nagpur. Kohli, the only Indian batsman to pass 50, made 116 from 120 balls as his side was bowled out for 250 in 48.2 overs. In reply, the tourists were well placed at 218 for six in the 45th over but lost their last five wickets for 24 runs. They needed 11 from the final over but Vijay Shankar took the last two wickets, including. Marcus Stonist for 52. In the final that went all the way to the course, Sparta Boss outshined a penalty shootout with back circle to emerge champions of the second annual Magda Mash Cup Futsal Championship, which concluded late Sunday at the National Gymnasium. During the championship game, which guaranteed the winner a cash prize of $600,000 and bragging rights for one year, two more seasoned teams in the format of the game battling to a thrilling 4-4 stalemate by the end of regulation and extra time. In the penalty shootout, Sparta boss edged home with a 2-1 lead, leaving back circles settling for the second-place prize of $300,000. The championship game did not disappoint as the outcome was never clear, keeping everyone on the edge of their seats. In the third-place playoff, 2018 champions Bent Street won 3-1 during a penalty shootout against Goldie's Money after regulation and extra time which ended 2-2, leaving Bent Street securing the third-place prize of $200,000 and Goldie's Money $100,000. Chelsea Griffith reporter for MTV Sports Today. Chelsea have appealed against FIFA's decision to ban them from signing players in the next two transfer windows. It follows the world governing body's investigation into Chelsea's signing of foreign under-18 players. FIFA says it found breaches in 29 cases out of 92 investigated, including striker Bert and Toro and Atlion. The governing body says it has received an appeal but could not confirm when this would be heard. Chelsea have also been filed $460,000 while the Football Association has been fined $390,000. The ban which runs until the end of January 2020 does not prevent the release of players and will not apply to their women's and futsal themes. The seventh annual Milo Schools football tournament, being supported by the Ministry of Health through their sub gender based violence campaign, continued last week. The tournament resumed with six round robin group matches at the Ministry of Education's ground on Carafesta Avenue. Wayne Wilson led the charge with a heated hat trick and was assisted by Andre Mayers, Tyrese Lewis, and Randy Pickering, each netting goals. Meanwhile, Chris Smith led Virgin Nugent Secondary to edge Tuckville Secondary 2-1, with St. Cuthbert's mission adding to their chances of advancing to the knockout round after a last-minute goal allowing them a win over Cummins Lodge Secondary. The final two matches of the day were contested between Golden Grove Secondary and Iflot Secondary, Friendship Secondary and St. John's College, which both ended with goalless draws. Chelsea Griffith reporter for MTV Sports Update. We tell you now that the owners of Manchester City are considering buying a club in India, says Chief Executive Officer Farhan Soriano. City Football Group increased its portfolio to seven clubs after buying a stake in Chinese third-tier side Xi Zhuangjing UFC in February. As well as Manchester City, the group also owns or has shares in New York City, Melbourne City, Oklahoma F. Marinos, Alitho Thorco and Giorona. City Football Group was created in 2013 and City's first sister club was established in New York. More news after the break. Stay with us. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. 
Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable, integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome back, you're still with MTV's News Update. Now for some news in the region. Mexican officials have issued a rare apology to the families of five youths who were killed in 2016 in eastern state of Veracruz. Corrupt local police officers colluding with the notorious Jalusa's new generation drug cartel seized the five in mistaken belief they were members of a rival gang. They handed them over to the CJNG, which held them and burned their bodies. More than 5,000 people have disappeared in Veracruz over the past decade. On the international scene, seven members of one family were among the 23 victims identified after an outbreak of tornadoes devastated the U.S. state of Alabama, officials have said. Every one of the victims, including four children, were found in close proximity to homes, rescue crews say. The victims range in age from 6 to 89, Lee Country Coroner Bill Harris said in a news conference on Tuesday. Up to eight people remain missing, officials say, warning that the death toll could still rise. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 8.15. Let's now turn our attention to the Denver Harbor Bridge and the Borbys River Bridge schedules. That's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Jagley outlines conditions under the opposition that will support an extension of the election deadline beyond March 21. Christopher Ram wants President Granger to stop the charade and call elections. Ghana's health crisis depends as more babies dying at public hospitals. And in sport injury rules, Andrew Russell out of T20 series against England. Cut our rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thanking you for watching. Have a good night.